Hi, I'm Pastor Warren at uh, Greenford Baptist Church and um, hey, good to see you. Um, I, how you doing? Um, it's Tuesday the 24th of March as I'm uh, recording this and we've just had uh, clearly uh, last night the uh, clear instructions from our government to um, what some people are calling lockdown, but basically to clearly state that only essential movement uh, should be done. And I know for some that this, um, some people see this as taking away uh, freedom of uh, liberty. Uh, others see this as quite an incredibly scary time. I've been for the last few days since I was here uh, very briefly Sunday morning in the office and uh, meditating with the Lord and looking through uh, the psalm. I uh, Not psalm, I apologise, through the talk from Isaiah chapter 26. And as I promised in my last talk that we would continue with that. But I want to read the whole of this chapter to you. Uh, so uh, you may want to read along with me. This is going to be Isaiah chapter 26 uh, verses 1 to 21. Now bizarrely enough right now rather than a Sunday morning talk you have the option now to pause me while you uh, open up your Bible app or you grab the good old papyrus and, uh, and look through it. So uh, pause me now if you need to find Isaiah 26. Ah, welcome back. Hi. Uh, so uh, let's go through this, shall we, together. It starts in verse one. In that day, everyone in the land of Judah will sing this song. Our city is strong. We are surrounded by the walls of salvation. Open the gates to all who are righteous. Allow the faithful to enter. You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. Trust in the Lord always, for the Lord God is the eternal rock. And we went through that and believe seriously, God is saying, fix your thoughts on him. Think above what is happening right now. Think way above the noise and, and, and the fear and 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 even think above what you're seeing on the BBC news or any news channel you're watching. Uh, not think above the government instructions and guidelines. We must follow them. But what I am saying is, is, is it's very easy if we saturate ourselves in that TV. We think uh, uh, we get lost in, in the fear and the, and the worrying and what it means for us to suddenly be. What do you mean I don't have freedom? Let, let's. Think about our thoughts above all of that and fix our eyes on uh, Jesus. Trust the Lord God. He is our eternal rock. In the scheme of things, uh, this, as awful as this coronavirus is, as awful as it is taking many lives, there is an eternal perspective that followers of Jesus Christ, lovers of God, should have in all of this. Recognising I might well be saying this to people now who have just lost loved ones, or who are fearful of losing loved ones. There is an eternal God who we should make our rock. Let, let's carry on with the psalm. Uh, with the psalm. Keep calling it a psalm. Sorry. He humbles the proud and brings down the arrogant city. He brings it down to the dust. The poor and oppressed trample it underfoot and the needy walk all over it. But for those who are righteous, the way is not steep and rough. You are a God who does what is right and you smooth out the path ahead of them. Lord, we show our trust in you by obeying your laws. 
and God's law right now, everybody. And that is talking clearly about the Bible and law, meaning about following statutes. And the first thing is worship the Lord your God with all your strength and mind and heart and soul and everything about you. And the other law is this, fix our thoughts on him. Let's show our trust in him by fixing our thoughts on him. Our heart's desire is to glorify your name, it continues from verse 8. All night long I search for you in the morning and I earnestly seek for God. For only when you come to judge the earth will people learn what is right. Your kindness to the wicked does not make them good. Although others do right, the wicked keep doing wrong and take no notice of the Lord's majesty. O Lord, they pay no attention to your upright fist. Show them your eagerness, defend your people, then they will be ashamed. Let your fire consume your enemies. Now, I will continue. I want to finish this to the end. Lord, you will grant us peace. All we have accomplished is really from you. O Lord, our God, others have ruled us, but you alone are the one we worship. Those we served before are dead and gone. Their departed spirits will never return. You attacked them and destroyed them, and they are long forgotten. O oh Lord, you have made our nation great. Yes, you have made us great. You have extended our borders, and we give you glory. Lord, in distress, we searched out for you. We prayed beneath the burden of your discipline, just as a pregnant woman writhes and cries out in pain as she gives birth. So were we in your presence, Lord. We too writhe in agony, for nothing comes of our suffering. We have not given salvation to the earth, nor brought life into the world. But those who die in the Lord will live. Their bodies will rise again. Those who sleep in the earth will rise up and sing for joy. For your life-giving light will fall like dew on your people in the place of the dead. Go home, my people, and lock your doors. Hide yourself for a little while until the Lord's anger has passed. Look, the Lord is coming from heaven to punish the people for the earth for their sins. The earth will no longer hide those who have been killed. They will be brought out for all to see. So let me make this very clear right now. Though this is an Old Testament, uh, this is Isaiah this is uh, Old Testament uh, prophecy and speaking. I want to pick things out. First and foremost, I do not believe for one moment that this coronavirus has been sent by God to punish the earth. This virus is part of being part of a fallen, broken world. But with all bad things, I always believe that God can use them to bring out good. And that is what he's in the process of doing. It may not feel like it at times. And you may be a, a non-Christian or a non-believer in God watching this right now going, you sure this feels like punishment from some overlord, nasty God? It isn't. I can assure you. But God will use this. First and foremost, in verse 5, it says, He humbles the proud and brings down the arrogant city. I've been mulling on this with the Lord, and I do wonder if uh, the arrogant city uh, can also be in prophecy, another sense of the arrogance of human structures, constructs. Um, Babylon is an imagery of, of, of a human construct trying to remove God from the picture. And it is at times like this that people's foundations have been rocked. Suddenly we realise we actually can't control our health. We suddenly realise that our economy is fragile because the minute an invisible enemy like this virus comes along, it, it squashes the economy in large parts. There are going to be some people um, who are going to benefit uh, economically from this. Uh, electronic communications, for instance. But nonetheless, our wider economy, we have noticed, doesn't, is incredibly fragile. It is not as robust as we thought. 
the minute a virus comes along, it rocks people's foundations. So I believe uh, that there has been an arrogance about all of us, including myself. There's been an arrogance, especially in the West, that we are always going to economically be fine. We're always going to get everything we should want. Um, and and health-wise, it's fine. And clearly that's not true. This has shaken this. And, and God can use this to shake the arrogance of what we believe is economic security or where we think our security comes from. But for those of us who are followers of Christ, and that's where it says in verse 7, for those who are righteous. Now, we all know that we're not actually righteous. We're righteous because of what Jesus Christ did on that cross. We're righteous. But he, the way will not be steep and rough because he will guide us through the right path. It does not, it means that we will not get everything we want right now. It's here, my brothers and sisters, that maybe we start learning for ourselves, where does our priorities lie? Verse 9 states, all night long I search for you in the morning, I earnestly seek God. And I believe part of the goodness that's coming out of this is God wants his people to earnestly seek him, to earnestly spend time with him. Not to get us out of the trouble, but just to be with him. I, I keep saying this, we've been given a opportunity, my brothers and sisters, for some of us who are in the care working or are key workers, you're not going to have the freedom of time. You're actually going to be right in the front line of this. But for others of us, we've now been forced to be at home. Been forced to spend time at home. This is a time that actually we can use to be with God. And I am going to leap straight to that verse 20. Go home, my people, and lock your doors. Hide yourselves for a little while. Now, the NLT, I, I don't like that translation. The NIV says, hide yourselves for a little while until this fury passes by. Now is the time to lock ourselves away in this time of being isolated. This is a time to be with God. I want to encourage you again, be with the Lord. Spend time with him. He wants to spend time with you. And I believe he's been wanting to spend his time with his people for a very long time. We've just been distracted all the time with with other things, been distracted with being busy at work, distracted with being busy with watching TV, been distracted with being busy, lots of things. This is a time to be busy with God. Now, I recognise there are many of us now who... who We've got to spend time with children because they can't go to school. And so therefore, then you'll be saying, well, what are you talking about, Pastor? I've got to look after the kids. Don't you know? I've got to look after the kids. And I'm like, yeah, you absolutely you have. And I don't deny that for one moment. But God knows that as well. So he knows he can still spend time with him while you're looking after the children. And while you're trying to keep them occupied and educate them and spend time with them. God can still download stuff to you in the midst of what feels like busyness. This is a time I think the Lord in verse 10 is going to show people that have never taken notice of his majesty. Our world does not take notice of the Lord's majesty. And this is a time now that we, we as his people, we need to notice his majesty first and foremost. We need to notice his glory. We need to notice his love for us. And then his love clearly for everybody else who doesn't know him yet. But I suppose that time doesn't happen until we start noticing his majesty. It's time to notice that he is Lord. 
I say this really, really, really well and trying to be honouring to lots of people, but this is a time for us to stop being namby-pamby. This is a time to stop saying, oh, I appreciate where you're coming from and your truth and your belief, and your truth is your truth. There is one truth. Jesus is Lord. And it's time to notice that majesty. And it's time to notice and to say that this majesty, this Lord, came and died for us so that we could have eternal life. So that things like the coronavirus does not scare us because we know where our eternal home is. It's time to say to our neighbours, it is time, though we can't say it right now, it is time to actually, for us as church, to stand up and say, there is one Lord. And there is no other way. No other truth comes in. There is one truth. And it is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And it's time for us to engage, my brothers and sisters, with him. And you've been given the mandate to do so right now. Because things are being shut down. It means we are being stripped back so that we spend time with the Lord. So I just want to encourage you, spend time with the Father. He wants to spend time with you. He is the Lord. He is the lover of your very heart. And he wants to spend time with you. So you spend time with him. Continue to pray. Continue to pray for all our health workers key workers, those who do have to be right now, right on the front line. Pray for the food banks. Pray for those currently who can volunteer and staff those food banks. Pray for our more vulnerable people. Pray for your neighbours. Pray for yourself. Allow God to download what he wants to download to you. Come into his presence, come under his authority, but come under his banner of love as well. I pray that's what, these next few days, you'll see a download of God that you've never experienced before. God bless to you.